Okay, today we're going to talk about transformations of linear functions. We already talked about the fact that linear functions is dealing with when we talk about y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is our y-intercept. So, um, before we get into that, we just need to know that that's the form of linear functions right here. But um, we have a parent function of linear functions, and it is y equals x. So y equals x has an x and y-intercept right here at the origin. The slope is 1, and the y-intercept is 1. So um, to identify the slope, we go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, and that's our parent function. We call it a parent function. We'll talk about other types of functions in the future, like exponential functions, quadratic functions, and those transformations. But right now, we just need to focus on linear functions. And it's important for us to understand that our parent function is going to always be um, the line right here with the slope of 1 going through the origin. Um, that is our parent function. And so when we talk about transformations, everything we do is going to be compared to this function. So in this first section, we're going to look at the transformation when f of x plus h occurs. So if we look here, notice that compared to this parent function, we have this function here. All right, which is to the left of this function by 2. So when we describe the transformation of this function, we just need to fill in our h. So it's f of x, because f of x is just our parent function, and we add 2. All right, so what this means is, the equation for this line, this blue line here, is x plus 2. x plus 2. All right? And you may say, how do I know it's going left? Well, here are my rules right here. All the rules we're going to be talking about in each section are written on the side. So, what can we say about the transformation of x plus 2? Well, it shifted left two units. So if we were to come over here to this practice section and try out some of these problems, it says, given the equation below, determine the change on the parent function. So we have f of x plus 1, right? So that means it's going to be x plus 1, because remember, our parent function is f of x equals x. So when we add 1, note, we've said over here, on the side, we're going to be shifting left. So this graph will shift left one unit. How do I know? Because of the one here. That's how I know it's going to shift left. So what about two? Right? What about two? We know it shifts left because of this rule here. Whenever we have plus three inside of the parentheses, we're going left. So this one shifts left three units. All right, what about number three here? We have x plus four in parentheses, so we shift left four units. And finally, you fill out number four. I'm pretty sure it'll be easy. <laughs> in this next section, notice that we have f of x minus h inside of our parentheses. Whenever we have a minus h inside of parentheses, we're going to be going to the right h units. All right. So in this particular situation, of course, we have our parent function here. All right. But we're going to be shifting to the right one, two, three. So our equation is f of x minus 3. How do I know it's 3? Because I shifted right 3. And that's what this description says. The graph is shifted right 3. So our equation 
is x minus 3 when we shift right 3. Okay, so it says given the equations below, determine the change on the parent function f of x equals x. Well, if we have f of x minus 1 in parentheses, we know we're shifting right because of the minus 1 inside parentheses, and the 1 tells us that we're shifting right 1 unit. So we say right 1 unit. All right, for number 6, we have f of x minus 2. The x minus 2 in parentheses says we're shifting right. All right, and then the 2 says we're shifting right 2 units. All right, 2 units. Number 7 says we're shifting right because of that f of x minus 5 inside of the parentheses. So this is right 5 units. You complete 8. In this next section, we have f of x plus k. And the plus k, notice in this situation, our plus k, that plus k is on the outside of the f of x, right? It's not f of x plus k inside parentheses. That plus k is outside of the parentheses. And that means that we're going to shift up k units. So in this situation, if we look compared to the parent function here, we're shifting up one, two units. So we write f of x plus two. That plus two because we shifted up. Outside of the parentheses because it's up. And that's what we describe right here. All right, so it says, given the equations below, determine the change on the parent function. So if we have f of x plus 1, then we're shifting up 1. All right, for number 10, um, we have f of x plus 4, so we're shifting up 4. 11, we're going up 3. And 12, you complete it. Finally, we're on the section where we have f of x minus k on the outside of the parentheses. And when we have that minus k on the outside of the parentheses, it means we're going down k units. All right, so in this situation, we go down twice. So, uh -oh. my apologies, guys. Um, since we go down, we write f of x minus 2 because we go down 2 units. All right, in this example, we have f of x minus 1. So that means we go down 1 unit. f of x minus 7 means we go down 7 units. f of x minus 3 means we go down 3 units and you complete 16. Now we're ready to go over. Okay, so the first part is in the only section we have. We also have to talk about what if we multiply a number times our parent function. Remember the parent function is y equals x. So what if we have um, two times f of x? 